Hello, and welcome back. I'm Christy, the voice behind Crafty Christy's Creations Silhouette Studio Tutorials, which is a subset of Crafty Christy's Creations How-To Videos. This is the place to find step-by-step -step directions on how to do all the things in Silhouette Studio. Whether you're a beginner or needing a little refresher, this is the place for you. So grab your computer and open Silhouette Studio. It's time to dive into another episode. Welcome back. Today it is all about mandala designs. So as you can see here, uh, this is a mandala. Most of them are flower shapes. And I am going to teach you how to create one of these in Silhouette Studio. Now, um, I do believe you have to have designer's edition or higher in order to use some of the cool features I'm going to show you. But um, other than that, let's jump right in. So I'm just going to set this guy aside. Whoops. I'm just going to control G, group all those pieces together and move that aside. And we're going to go ahead and start from the beginning. So I've put my grid lines on. Those are going to be really helpful for this. And then um, going up to here, so you can see I've got thick black lines and then I've got white fill. So I've got my little um, outline and I turned up to five points. If you want to cut this out of paper, I would make that more like 10 or 20 points um, because we all know that intricate designs with paper is a lot harder to cut out. And if you're just going to cut this out of vinyl, you know, um, five points is probably thick enough. It just depends what look you're going for. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, first thing I'm going to do is come over to the ellipse tool and I'm just going to draw a circle. To make sure it's completely round, I'm going to hold down the shift key while I click and drag my circle. Let go of your mouse before you let go of shift. That way you make sure it stays perfectly round. And I'm going to hit V on my keyboard to get my little selection tool again. Um, because this is going to be the center, I want this one to have no fill so we can see through it. And this little circle with the plus sign is showing the rotation. So if I were to come up here and rotate my design, it's going to rotate around the center, which is where this is. You can come down here to your settings and to defaults. And then down here, center of rotation, you can turn that on so that way it always shows that to you. Otherwise, if it's not there, you can hit O on your keyboard and it will bring it up if you're just using it once or twice. And I'm going to take that center of rotation. I'm going to zoom in here and I want my center of my circle to be right on the crosshairs of this grid. So I'm going to grab my design and I'm going to line that up. That's really important to make sure you get that lined up in the center so that way your mandala design can be centered and look geometrically pleasing. All right, so I'm going to zoom back out a little bit so we can do some work. And I am going to grab that ellipse tool again. And I'm just going to make some petals. I'm going to turn this into the base of a flower. Uh, that looks pretty good. Hit V to get your selection tool to move that where you want to start on your circle. Um, and I'm overlapping the bottom with this line here because uh, this is the center of my circle and that's how I want to do it. Otherwise, if you have a gap, you're going to have to figure out how to connect that gap later to the rest of your design. So I like to start with mine overlapping. And then here's the center of rotation. But when I go to replicate, I want it to replicate based on the center of my entire design. So I'm going to click and drag that center of rotation back to the center of my circle and then let go right there. I'm going to head over to the replicate panel. I'm going to come up here to the replicate with the plus sign. 
I'm going to leave it as one because I don't know how many I need to go completely around the circle. And the position to copy, I'm going to leave as one as well. And then um, the degree is how far over you want it to go. This depends on how fat and how tall you've made your designs and what you want it to look like. So this is just kind of a guessing game. I'm going to start with 20 degrees and hit replicate. And that's a little too close. I don't want those to overlap. So I'm going to hit control Z, control Z again to undo. And let's, I'm going to try 25. And that looks much better. So I'm just going to continue to hit replicate until I have enough of these to go all the way around my design. And now it looks like a flower. Oh, not okay. So you can see there that still wasn't quite the right one. So I'm going to unfortunately undo all of those because I am a perfectionist. And I'm going to try 30 degrees. It has a little space in between the petals. So if you don't like that, you know, maybe 27 degrees is the right one. Um, you know, or if you're okay with things overlapping, you got to do what works for you. So 30 degrees is the winner for this. And then the next thing I'm going to do, those are filled in. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to grab my ellipse tool again. And I'm just going to make another shape. I want to do kind of an arc that's going to go in between those petals. So I'm going to hit V on my keyboard to get my selection tool. And I'm going to double tap. And then you get your point editing. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Control Z to undo. So you can click on the little points and then you get these little handlebars on the sides. And you can pull those in different directions. And that is how you manipulate shapes to make a new shape. And I'm going to make kind of a... Uh, I'm going to delete these side ones. So I'm just clicking and hitting the delete key. And that's the shape I'm looking for. Kind of like a upside down teardrop sort of. And I'm going to put that here right now. I want my center of rotation in the center of the object so I can rotate it to fit. And I'm going to make it bigger to fit in that area. And then if you want, you know, I'm going to send this to the back so I can see how it's going to fit in. I'm not worried if it goes under like this because when we're done, we're going to fill this one in with white as well, but right now I left it open so we can find that center. But um, I think I'm gonna do one right there. Uh, actually, I'm gonna make this uh, a little less fat. I'm gonna make it a little skinnier so the edges don't fall off on the sides there. And that looks good right there. So again, I'm going to drag that center for rotation to the center of my initial circle. All right. And then again, I'm going to the replicate panel to the plus sign. I'm only doing one and I'm going to do that 30 degree again. And I think that should put it in the correct spot between each petal. So you can see it's placing it in front. Now between each replication, you could come over here and send it to the back. Um, I find it faster to just hit replicate and then go back through and click them all and send them to the back at once. So I'm going to hold down the shift key while I click each of these pieces. And then I'm going to come up here and send to the back. All right. I know it kind of looks wonky, but again, this will all be filled in when we're done. All right. So now I'm actually going to take another one. I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit duplicate. I'm going to raise that up 
send it to the back so I can see what it looks like. And, you know, usually mandalas have a lot of repeating designs. I think I'm going to leave it right there. And again, on my replicate panel, I'm doing one at 30 degrees. Oop, and you know what? I didn't pull down my center of rotation. It was off, so they all would have been not perfectly around my circle. So come back and get that centered. And now we can hit replicate. And I'll put that all the way around. Okay. Holding down shift, grabbing all of those, and I will be sending those to the back. All right, so you can keep building out this design however many layers you would like. I'm going to quit there just to give you a good idea of what this is going to look like. So now I'm going to come in. Since I'm all done, I'm going to fill that piece in with white so now you don't see that center. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to draw. I'm going to um, put another circle, so I'm going to hit Control copy Control v to paste. Uh, control C to copy, Control V to paste. I'm going to line those up and then I'm going to hold down sh uh, Shift and I'm just an Alt. If you hold down Shift and Alt together, Alt or Option on a Mac together, it will shrink it from all directions right to the center. But you have to let go of everything at the same time. I'm not good at that. So I think. This piece, I'm going to take the white off for right now, and I'm going to come back to this outer circle, and I'm going to get rid of the white in the center so I can find the center of my design again to make sure that this flower is, this circle is lined up in the center, and it looks like it is. Okay. And I'm going to do one more. So. Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and I'll line that up, and then Shift, Alt, or Option, shrinking it down. I'm going to let go of, of my mouse and then let go of those letters. And now I can fill, you really only have to fill in. Um, well, I guess you need to fill in all the layers so all of the extra pieces aren't seen. Okay, so I'm going to call that done. Now what you're going to do is come over to your trace panel. And we're going to trace by color. Before I do that, I'm going to come over here grab everything in my design and I'm gonna hit control G to group everything together that'll just make it easier and now to trace by color you get your little thing here I'm gonna click just the black because that's the only thing I want to trace and then I'm going to do all areas and I need to just adjust the trace box Come on, trace box. I'm just going to undo because it's distorting my design. So I'm going to click off and then I'm just going to click my trace box and I'm going to stretch out my trace box so I get all of the pieces. I can just scoot this down. Okay, once everything's in there, I'm going to hit trace all areas. And then you can adjust your tolerance. I usually go around 50%. Seems to be the sweet spot for me. And then hit trace. So now I'm going to pull 
my design away. This is why we grouped it. Otherwise, you would have to pull each element individually. And this is what you're left with. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to give it a fill color so you could see what it would look like if you went to um, cut this out. So those red lines would be your cut line and the green would be the vinyl or the paper what you'd be left with. All right, easy peasy. There you have it. This is how you make a mandala design in Silhouette Studio. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this tutorial valuable. If you did, click like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future Silhouette Studio tutorials. Happy silhouetting! Until next time, with love, Crafty Christie.